Okay, things are getting exciting. We're getting closer to having oral GLP-1 medications approved for weight. I'm gonna do a comparison, so let's get started. Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Megan. I'm a board-certified physician in internal medicine, lifestyle medicine, and obesity medicine. And this is really important because I actually prescribe these medications all the time. I actually talk to patients about their weight all the time. I've helped hundreds of patients lose weight, and I'm here to help you too. So if you're confused about your weight, if you have questions about weight medicines, and if you want medically-based, fact-based answers to your questions, you're in the right place. Welcome. So if you have been following research lately at the time of this filming in September 2025, you may have noticed that a couple big studies came out in the New England Journal of Medicine a day apart, basically. And be and this is exciting because we are just getting so much closer to having real oral GLP-1 medications that are approved for weight loss uh, on the market. Now we do have Ribelsis, that's an oral GLP-1, it's approved for diabetes, doesn't work very well for weight, in my experience in what the research has shown. But we are getting very, very close to having other options, including um, a differently dosed version of ribelsis. So ribelsis is semaglutide. And so what's happening now is that different doses of semaglutide are getting tested in terms of how well they do for weight loss. So let's just go ahead, jump right in and talk about what the research shows. So today I'm talking about the newest research on orforglipron, which is a small molecule GLP-1 and oral semaglutide, which is the oral version of Wagovi and Ozempic. So let's start with orforglipron. So orforglipron, and I've done a bunch of videos on orforglipron already, but orforglipron is a small molecule and not a peptide. And it's currently in phase three testing. And this article, this and the research was just published in the New England Journal of Medicine um, that looked at a daily oral medication of orforglipron at six milligrams, 12 milligrams, and 36 milligrams, comparing all that. And this was with over 3,000 patients. Um, and what it showed was that at 72 weeks, the highest total body weight loss with the highest dose of 36 milligrams daily was 11.2%, which puts it around the Wagovi Ozempic range, maybe a little bit closer to liraglutide, still very decent results. 18% of subjects had a reduction of 20% or more of their total body weight. And then in terms of side effects, uh, there were mostly mild to moderate GI side effects. So very similar to what we've seen in the other studies and also in real world practice in terms of what's currently available on the market. Okay, so let's jump over to what was published in September, a day later, in the New England Journal of Medicine um, about oral semaglutide. And that was looking at a dose of 25 milligrams versus placebo daily of oral semaglutide. This was for 307 patients, so 10% the size of the other study. And what it found was total body weight loss after 64 weeks was 13.6%, so a little bit better than orforglipron, closer to where Wagovi Ozempic gets people around 12 to 15%, um, but it was a much smaller study. And again, there were GI side effects um, were the predominant side effects listed. I'm also gonna link a study below because oral semaglutide was studied in 2023. There was a Lancet study, the Oasis One study about 50 milligrams of, um, 50 milligrams of daily oral semaglutide. And that was a phase three study um, also placebo controlled. And the estimated decrease in body weight was 15.1%. Uh, so very interesting because it was much higher and close to the same results 
as the 25 milligram dose. And again, in that study, the 50 milligram study, a lot of people had side effects, about 80% of the uh, patients given semaglutide had side effects. And those again, tended to be GI related side effects. So my take on this is that um, currently the data for the 25 of semaglutide and the 36 of or 4 glipron look pretty similar. Um, maybe the semaglutide is slightly better, but it's also going to depend on how well people tolerate it in these bigger studies and in real world practice. That's going to make a huge difference in terms of you know what I reach for when I'm prescribing for people. So for me, the results look pretty neck and neck so far, and it's gonna the tiebreaker on my end is really gonna be how well can people get these medications and what the side effects look like on a bigger scale and in real life. So very exciting things coming along. And as always, if you have questions about this, you can leave it on this video or on another video and I will add them to the list. If you wanna work with me directly, I do work with people around the world as a weight loss coach to help them with the non-medical aspects of their weight loss. I'll leave all that info down below. Thank you so much for watching and please be well.